So in Sandy, Utah, there's a very popular therapist by the name of Dr. Julie Hanks. Julie is a significant social media influencer amongst Latter-day Saint women. She actually has over 100,000 followers on Instagram. After a relative of mine left the church and I learned that Julie Hanks had some influence on that, I began to look into what Julie was saying to her really large following online, and what I found shocked me. I also wanted to extend an open invitation to Dr. Hanks to come on my podcast and discuss anything in this video that she feels is misrepresenting her. Anyway, feel free to share this video with anyone who you think should be aware of the content. It has been very helpful to my mental health to claim personal authority over my life. That that ultimately trumps everything else. So ultimately it's a choice to do what that leader has asked. It's also a choice to not do what they ask. It's so claiming that as my choice. Yeah. Is is how you like I may choose to not obey. As I listen to members of the church all over the world, this is how they define agency. It's the ability to choose and I can do what I want. That's false. Why do we have agency? It is to choose him, not to choose what we want. The hymn is called choose the right, not choose what you want. <laughs> so from tonight on, don't ever use a misunderstood concept of agency to justify sin. It's like for the rest of the world, like for most communities, this isn't even a problem. Mm -hmm. It's a problem because we say it's a problem. You cannot afford in any degree to become involved with pornography, whatever its form. It is poison. Do not watch it or read it. It will cloud your minds with evil and destroy your capacity to appreciate the good and the beautiful. But like there are plenty of relationships where it's not a thing. Like mm -hmm. one or both partners look at porn or they look at it together and it's like the context makes a huge impact on how the couple deals with it. Right? Suffice it to say that all who are involved become victims. Children are exploited and their lives are severely damaged. The minds of youth become warped with false concepts. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And so I think um, reducing the shame and kind of normalizing, like, look, this is pretty common. Like, this doesn't mean anything about you as a human being. Or like, it's just this, it's a thing that he's dealing with. For some people, their goal is abstinence. Like I never will do this ever again. Mm -hmm. I don't think that that's realistic. You have to define between the two of you. What is, what is full recovery? What does that even look like? They will encounter people that pick which commandments they will keep and ignore others that they choose to break. I call this the cafeteria approach to obedience. Picking and choosing will not work. It will lead to misery. Why don't you want to pick and choose? We all have to pick and choose. You're all cafeteria Mormons. It's important to separate heavenly parents from earthly leaders. When a prophet speaks, those with little faith may think that they hear only a wise man giving good advice. Then if his counsel seems comfortable and reasonable, squaring with what they want to do, they take it. If it does not, they consider it either faulty advice or they see their circumstances as justifying their being, ex being an exception to the counsel. I had an experience as a young, um, a young adult where the prophet said something and and my personal revelation was like okay you get what he's saying but this is the path for you and well, it was different unfortunately it is common for persons who are violating god's commandments 
to declare that God has revealed to them that they are excused from obeying some commandment or from following some counsel. Such persons may be receiving revelation or inspiration, but it is not from the source they suppose. In its fullness, the personal line does not function independent of the priesthood line. Ultimately, we, which is one of the great things about our faith, is that we are entitled to personal revelation. Right. And so that, I think, in terms of a self, that has to be our guide. It is crucial that any personal revelation we feel we receive be cons consonant with the teachings of the Lord and his prophets. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Yeah, that's, that is interesting. I mean, I think maybe what it reveals is like, are you prioritizing this thing that is outside of yourself over yourself. developing the self? Like, is, yeah. the, is the relationship more important than developing a self? If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. But whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Is there a way to just, I know you can't guarantee you, but like a way to ensure that, that this isn't going to break a relationship, whether it's a relationship with the, with the church or a relationship with a, with a person. There is I, no guarantee. It may break. <laughs> and and so the alternative is you don't develop. But some people, as they develop a sense of self, they see or they decide, their self decides, I, I can't be associated with this organization. Yeah. And that's their choice. I okay. thought you would be a great person because you seem to have really come into your own and found your your purpose. So I want I want to know the secrets. <laughs> and for the first time in my life, I felt really good about my sexuality. Mm. Felt like it was the first time I felt like denying myself i am essentially denying one of his one of his most beautiful creations these false prophets and false teachers even attack the inspired proclamation on the family issued to the world in 1995 by the first presidency and the 12 apostles and it feels so much like your typical like Marvel story or like some superhero story where it's like this thing that I was I hated so much ends up being one of my greatest strengths and Your so superpower. I, yeah. <laughs> my superpower is gay. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It really is. Anyways, as I said from this pulpit a year ago, our hearts reach out to those who refer to themselves as gays and lesbians. We love and honor them as sons and daughters of God. They are welcome in the church. It is expected, however, that they follow the same God-given rules of conduct that apply to everyone else, whether single or married. And so I moved farther. I started going on dates. And I was experiencing feelings and excitement and things I'd never experienced before. And I was like, this is pretty good. <laughs> and so I processed. And now here I am. I've been out since 2018. I've dated uh, wonderful men. I've had some long-term relationships, short terms. And, okay, I'm like rambling now, but I love it. No, you're great. This is great. This is exactly we want to hear your story and how you became more authentic. For example, we have to be careful that love and empathy do not get interpreted as condoning and advocacy. Christ-like love is the greatest need we have on this planet. 
in part because righteousness was always supposed to accompany it. So if love is to be our watchword, and it must be, then by the word of him who is love personified, we must forsake transgression and any hint of advocacy for it in others. Jesus clearly understood what many in our modern culture seem to forget, that there is a crucial difference between the commandment to forgive sin which he had an infinite capacity to do, and the warning against condoning it, which he never, ever did even once. Oh, then my question, I guess, really is, you know, it seems like there must be some sort of shift between childhood and adulthood. Is it just like a, these are just developmental stages? Like mm -hmm. when, when do you start shifting from having an external authority to this, to the more stability with your internal authority? Well, some people never make that shift. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself is this little child. The same as greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Wearing the temple garment has deep symbolic significance. It represents a continuing commitment. Just as the Savior exemplified the need to endure to the end, we wear the garment faithfully as part of the enduring armor of God. Thus, we demonstrate our faith in Him and in his eternal covenants with us. So what was it that kind of made it so you could decide, like, I'm not going to wear them all the time if I'm uncomfortable or if I choose not to? Like, was there something that kind of clicked or shifted or? Um, that's a good question. I, you know, a big part of it might actually be like when I started following you and listening to your podcast, I know you've had maybe one or two other people that have kind of talked about this, but you talk about it all the time, you know, social media. And I kind of started thinking like, okay, like this is like my decision. Have you heard someone say a member of the church yeah. who has entered into the baptismal covenant? I have my agency. I can do what I want. You ever heard that? Yeah, you know what the answer is? No, you can't. You don't understand agency. <laughs> my, my response when I get asked about how I wear my underwear at a temple recommend is I say, I'm not really comfortable talking about my underwear. And that that's, works. That's all I say. <laughs> okay, I, I agree. That's a great yeah. way to handle it. Yes. So we are really bad at that in our culture. <laughs> yeah. it, we yeah. need consensus and conformity. And that is not what Christ taught. At the zenith of, of his mortal ministry, Jesus said, Love one another as I have loved you. To make certain they understood exactly what kind of love that was, he said, If you love me, keep my commandments. And whosoever shall break one of the least commandments and shall teach men so shall be the least in the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. Right? Yeah. He didn't teach consensus and conformity. I mean, he hung out with rebels and he, he was a rebel and he didn't yeah. conform. Really? He who said, not only should we not break commandments, but we should not even think about breaking them? And if we do think about breaking them, we've already broken them in our heart. And what of those who want to look at sin or touch it from a distance? Jesus said with a flash, if your eye offends you, pluck it out. If your hand offends you, cut it off. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill for verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Yeah. Oh my gosh, Julie, thank you so much. This is just, this is amazing. I think, I feel like we just need this. You know, our, our community needs this oh, so much. You. So I love all of your work and I'm grateful for this.
Each of us has to face the matter. Either the church is true or it is a fraud. There is no middle ground. It is the church and kingdom of God or it is nothing. I'm so excited. I hope you enjoy the courses, uh, finding the middle ground in the LDS church. The middle ground options will be removed from us as Latter-day Saints. The middle of the road will be withdrawn. If you want to get in on the next finding the middle ground in the LDS church Q&A or discussion group, go to my website uh, virtual events page. One is either for the kingdom of God and stands in defense of God's prophets and apostles or one stands opposed. For indeed, this life is a test. We know that this life is a test. Life is a test. The great test of this life is obedience. Today we warn you that there are false prophets and false teachers arising. We often assume that such individuals are associated with small radical groups on the fringes of society. However, I reiterate, there are false prophets and false teachers who have, or at least claim to have, membership in the Church. We choose those to whom we will turn for truth and guidance. The voices and pressures of the world are engaging and numerous, but too many voices are deceptive seductive, and can pull us off the covenant path. If most of the information you get comes from social or other media, your ability to hear the whisperings of the Spirit will be diminished. Even saints who are otherwise faithful can be derailed by the steady beat of Babylon's band. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and hit the subscribe button. Also, if you want more content, including the podcast, go to thoughtful-faith.com. Thanks for watching.